morning, guys. Welcome back to part two of our isopod tour of 2023. So this is all of the isopods and even some other stuff that I'm uh, basically everything that's going to be in this area. So we have some millipedes that we'll go over today. Um, no, those are new for us. So I haven't really been, I don't know too much about them or haven't really bred them yet. So, but I do have a lot of updates of what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to be going over those updates as well as the rest of the isopods that we have at the moment. Um, one of the biggest updates is that we are going to start doing master cultures at every single show um, for the foreseen future. So we went ahead and put 32 of them together now. Um, basically, they are going to, we took a lot out of our main master cultures, but we're going to fill them up. They're going to be just like that. Um, but by the time that they actually have bred, there's going to be a lot more in there. I can show you what like one of our cultures would look like. You can kind of replicate it from that of what our master cultures look like at the last shows. This is one of our cultures. So you're going to be getting a master culture that's just like that, um, but ours are even more thinned out um, just because we did spread it into 32 different cultures because all of ours were like extreme mas master cultures. But now we uh, we have, these are, I don't even know the size of these containers. I just got them at the dollar store, but they are... Looks like 96 fluid ounce containers, 12 cup containers. Um, so 12 cups water you can put in here to fill them up. And these are our master cultures that you don't have to do anything to besides for just feed them. So we're going to be doing these at every single show. Like I said, um, we got 32 of them for now. And then I'm going to start making the bins for these guys. Already punching out the holes. We're going to be putting the dirt in here, some springtails in here. That's why we left some more springtails in our master cultures. So you can put the springtails in here and then create these as pre-made kits already. So by the time that you actually go ahead and buy isopods from us at our shows, you can, you do have the option, if you don't have an enclosure made for them already, you will have the option of, uh, the option of having a pre-made and already cycled enclosure um, with springtails and everything already breeding in there. So all you have to do is just dump the isopods in there. So that is a few of the updates that we are working on currently as we speak. But today, we're going to be moving all of these guys down there. So I cleaned out that area, moved some stuff to the side. I'm redoing how I want to organize everything because I want these guys. They don't necessarily fit fully on this shelf. I want them to go on this shelf because it's a little bit better front and back. So let's go ahead and start off with a few of these. Let me put this guy back up there. And let's get started with the lavas. So our lava bin does need a little bit more, um, a little bit more care, a little bit more water. Um, in here. I still have not. It's only been this is only a day after the next day from the last video that I recorded Even though I'm posting this like a week later. It's only the next day So I still haven't done the leaves just yet But the lavas I leave the entire space under here and on top for them to stay drier if they want to because you can see Them huddling up where they want to be the thing that I messed up with these guys. We used to have a way Bigger colony. I'm just gonna put a sprinkle of the bug burger uh, we used to have a way bigger colony of these guys, but I accidentally dried them out. So we don't have that colony anymore, but uh, we did re redo them, re-get them. And um, yeah, so now we actually have them back. So we're going to bring them to shows when we can. But let's go into this next bin. And whenever those the lavas do get ready or do uh, produce a little bit more, then we will start bringing those back to shows. Now these guys... These are a very awesome species. I love these. These are the Werneries. These guys have that nice flat body with the white outline on the sides. I hope that's actually, let me actually take a picture of this. This might be my thumbnail for this video. Yeah, that's a nice, nice picture. We have a, a, a decent amount of these guys in here. Look, I even have zebras in here on accident. So I got to take those out and move those. But overall, the spatulatus are doing good in here. We got a bunch in there. Um, now we are just waiting for babies from them. Let's go ahead and water that moss because even though on there on that side It's still a little a little bit moist for them The moss per se is a little bit more dried out So we're gonna give that area a little bit of a spritz and just a little bug burger and then yeah we'll Move on to the next bin All right, so this side of of the area of the bin is kind of like more of my more expensive ice pods that we've gotten into and uh some other ones that we you know just the newer species that we really expanded into a lot 
Orange Vigors took me a long time to really get down on how to breed, even though uh, they're one of the beginning species that I said in my last video. These guys took me forever to get them going. And now we have a lot of them. They are doing real great for us. I love having them um, now, and we've already sold a bunch of them. So um, that's why they're still in the smaller containers. We do, I do plan on actually moving them up into the bigger containers in a few months, once the numbers get back to how they used to be. Um, but we have a few things to go through, like the Panda Kings, Rubber Duckies, other stuff like that. But in this one, we have the Spatulatus. You guys can see right there. You guys can see that mold growth. It's still it's still in there eating, but I uh, don't like having that necessarily. So that's why I watch how much bug burger I put in here. But we have a good amount of these guys. These guys have been doing good for us. I love having them. Um, haven't been breeding just yet, um, but they have been, you know, surviving. We got a bunch of them in here. Um, I'm just waiting to see the babies for them. But I know that'll come soon. I'm not too worried about it. Don't want to mess with these guys because you can see them all over the place. But let's go ahead and do the same thing for them. Give them a little bit of water. Put that water over there. And then let's give them a little spritz. Because they have, because that's already molded, that's why I watered it. But um, the main food, as you guys can see, they're tearing up the leaves. Um, so we definitely got to get more leaf litters, leaf litter ready for these guys. These guys are a nice species. I love these guys. You guys can already see we have a baby right there. If you guys can't tell already what species this is, these are the Hasai High Yellows. These guys are gigantic. Look at those babies. One, two right there, three right there. These guys are doing good for us. We're starting to see babies in here. Um, that's what I'm wanting to see. I've learned with these guys to not keep it too wet at all so i'm only going to be watering the sphagnum moss that's right there so we'll just give that a little spray if they want to be wet they'll go right in there more towards this side of the enclosure but all right let's go into the next one all right these guys are another nice isopod i mean all of these are nice but these guys are the orange crush they are the armadillidium officinales um, also known as like the hisser isopods I believe that's what these ones are. Um, but they, we don't have a lot of them. They don't, these ones don't like to be on wood, if you guys remember from the last video. But they do like to ball up. They don't really do much. Um, they're, they're more of a, to me personally, they're more of a species uh, not necessarily for the action of cleaning up. Uh, at least not from the start. You need to have a lot of these guys going. So it's going to take you a while before I'd say you guys can put these in an enclosure. Um, with another animal that might eat some of them. But I will say they are a great and nice isopod to look at, a different morph from the actual original aficionales, which are more black in color. And they're back. So last time we looked at the these guys, um, but we looked at the American line of them. Now I gotta find them to see the Japanese line. Um, there's not many in here that we got from the start, but there's some right there, you guys can see. These are the magic potions these magic potions are from the Japanese line um, instead of the American line. Um, that's one thing I don't know. I've asked a few people. Um, they're not really too sure. I think it's they have more black speckling for the uh, Japanese line than the American line. I've had some people that think um, oh, that, that moss is still nice and wet, so we're not going to wet that anymore. But I've had people think that um, the Americans, Americans get a little bigger than, the, um, than those guys. The rest of this enclosure is pretty dry though, even though they have that one nice spot. So I'm gonna do a nice a little rinse just around it, like that. But yeah, so I'm not really too sure. If you guys know the difference between them, this is one thing that you have to look for before you close any enclosure, is to make sure that there's no sticks by these holes, especially for me, since I don't have them covered. Um, my ice pots can see and I don't want that. But yeah, guys, so let me just grab this next one. But that is one thing that I don't necessarily know the difference between those two. Um, I do have some other ones that I still got to put away into new bins. So like these guys, these are the Hoffman Say guys. I do have some. I, I got these to add onto the line, but you're not going to see them in this video because they are mixed in with another uh, culture. But these are the uh, Priscilla Scaber Ghosts. 
There's only one right here, but you know, they're littered throughout this enclosure. Uh, moisture's still wet. You can see some water droplets up there. So to me, that is nice. You got another one over there, um, but I don't want to disturb everything too much. But we'll give it a little bit, just a little bit of a rinse. But all right, let's go to the next one. All right, these are the Magnificus, the Orange Titan. These guys are a nice, bigger species. They have, um, I'm pretty sure they're called the Europods. They have the white on the, the tips of the Europods. Um, these guys are nice. I got these a little bit more off of an impulse. You see, there's another mixed one in here, and I believe this one is actually part of the Orange Vigor bin. Um, like I said, guys, this is the problems of not doing um, it the proper way, which is actually having oh it is okay it is moist down there which is good um but the proper way is uh, actually having holes over the covers but if you're not going to do that then sometimes you might get some in different bins um like i said it was just basically pure off of pure laziness at first but now um i might i think once we get our actual facility change things into bins that are more efficient for us I think that's when we'll have everything proper. The only thing that I actually have the the mesh over is the ones for the millipedes. So we got the bumblebees as well as the ivory. Florida ivory, you can actually see one of them right there living its best life. Look at it. Look at it. But yeah, let's go ahead and go back to these guys. Yeah, so these guys are nice. They're cool as well. I got them um, at Tinley in October. So that is October 2022. If you guys are watching this video years from now, um, not sure if anyone will be, but yeah, guys, these are, look in here, you guys can see. See, these, those zebras I gotta get, as well as the orange vigor. See, that's in two bins, but these are um, very nice ones. These are the white side penguins, so the Cubara species. Not much of them in here. I didn't grab much when I first got them. I'm glad we were able to see one right from the start. So that means when I grab this orange bigger bin, um, either I mix them up on accident. So I know I did that once, but I just got to look on the other side and see if there's anything on the orange bigger bin. I don't see it here, but maybe right there. Depends on if that's touching the back wall or not. Um, but it's not. So I don't know how they're escaping. We'll see when we get to it. But all right, next spin. All righty. These guys are very nice. I do like these ones. These are the Shiro Utsubi. Utsuri. They have a nice coloration pattern to them. I love it. Um, you know, just their shape with the coloration. I like that better than the dairy cow shape with the, with the similar coloration. Um, even though there has spots. But I do like these guys. They're new for us, but we do already have some babies in there. Have we water that and just rinse out the enclosure. But yeah, guys, this is all it really is. I mean, this is maintenance for these guys. But like I said before, when it comes to the economics and why some isopods are more expensive than others, is one, most people didn't get them in bulk where they're breeding for them already. They had to build them up for months before they were to sell them. And some even still take longer than others to breed. Just like these guys, these are the Versicolor, but I don't, can't find any in here. I don't think I was able to find any last time either. I gotta keep monitoring this bin because this is the one bin, since I didn't see them that time, I was hoping to see them this time. And since I'm not seeing any, we're gonna have to look into this bin and see what we can do with it. If if they all passed away, then I have to go ahead and put another species in here, but I wanna see what they passed away from. If I was just watering it too much or not, but we'll see a little bit later. On to the next bin, which is one of my more expensive species right now. These guys are a very nice species, but only if we can find them, if we can find at least one. I don't see any on here. Um, see, another orange vigor. I gotta go through these bins. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take you right now. Put you in this cup with some water. Let's have some water in it. And 
Okay, so I don't see any. There's one. So this, these are the shiny gators. As you guys can see the little spiking, spikiness on it. I don't want to mess with them too much. There's only like five or six of them in here. But um, yeah, these guys are doing well for us. So let's go ahead and just water that. Make sure that they do good. Want to make sure that if they're doing well now, want to make sure that these guys keep doing well. And definitely hydrate this. Now, I can't help but say that over the last few months, I would say my care for my isopods probably has not been to the best as what I normally do. Um, more because I've had, like in October, right after Tinley, I had COVID. And then I had, you guys can see there are some of the rubber duckies right there. We do have some blondes as, as well as some regulars. I'm all breeding in the same bin. We do have a lot of them in here. Like you can see, rubber ducky, 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 another ducky, um, ducky back there, duckies underneath there. Um, so we do got a, do got a few of them in here, which is good. I want to keep this a little bit more moist for them. I just need them to really breed for us, really hold down the fort with their breeding. I want them to get their numbers up a lot more before we really bring these to shows. Now, if you guys do. <clears throat> I do have a trusted friend that uh, also breeds isopods that I got a lot of mine from originally. And I know he, sometimes he's, like even for Tinley in the last show, he gave us some isopods, some, especially some of the more expensive ones, to bring to the show to sell to you guys. So if there are some ones that you guys are looking for, please DM me before any one of these shows that I talk about in these videos. Um, let's see if we can find anyone in here. What's in this one? The Expansus. These guys, I should be able to find them pretty. There they are. There's one of them right there. The ex Priscilla Expanses. These guys are nice. They like a little bit drier. So this enclosure, I'm only going to only, because the rest of the dirt feels okay. But look at that patterning on them. That's nice. I'm going to take a picture of that too. But these guys are a nice species as well. They like a little bit drier, which is okay. Um, we just gotta accommodate to them for that. But I will do a light rinse like that over the tank, or over the enclosure, and then really heavily pack it down right where this is at. Just so they, you know, since so they don't, since so they like it dry, once the, the top, uh, the water that's on top of the dirt transfers down and kind of like dissolves itself into the rest of the dirt, it will not be as wet as it looks right now. That's why I just did a light covering of it. So I'm gonna take these out at the same time. These are going to be the blue pigeon. So these guys, see, that's what happens when you put a little bit too much of the bug burger. That's why I'm not gonna put any more, but these guys, there's one right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. Oh, here's another one. That's a little bit better to see. But let me zoom in for you guys, see what I can do. There we go. Should be able to see him pretty well. There he is right there. Yeah, these guys are very nice. Very nice high spots to have. I enjoy having them. Um, I do want to see babies hopefully soon with them, but that is okay. I just gotta keep doing what we're doing and just, you know, when, when things don't go right with breeding guys, trust me, it happens with everyone. All you have to do is just take your time and then figure it out, figure out what's wrong with them. Like for a long time, I couldn't breed rubber duckies at all. Didn't even see a single baby. And then now I'm actually able to open up the rubber ducky bin and see more rubber duckies than the, than the previous time before. So it's definitely worth it. But all right, last one on that shelf. And these are gonna, are going to be, I believe it was a granulatum because I did not put a label on them. Um, but let me just try and find one and confirm my suspicions uh, what I had left in this bin. Oh, unfortunately, one looks like it passed. See, these zebras are getting everywhere. Oh, so yeah, it looks like some of them have passed since putting them in here. 
I believe, I thought these were the granulatums. Oh no, yeah. So I'm gonna have to look into this bin and see why they passed. Uh, maybe it wasn't the granulatums. I'd have to look it up. I put them in some bin, but here's one of them. Those aren't the granulatums, never mind. I forgot which one these are called, but this is a nice species as well. Once I get this name, I'll definitely shout it out in another video. But if you guys know what it is, go ahead and put that species down in the comments. But yeah, let's go on to these next few other bins. I'm just gonna water that one side. I'm just gonna spritz it because if they like it drier, I'm not gonna do that to the entire enclosure. But now all those are moved down there, which is great for me, exactly how I want it. And now we can move on to the rest of these four. Uh, well, six, I, the, the granulatums are in here. That's what it is. Granulatums in here, I forgot what, which one those were called, but hopefully I can find that name soon for you guys. But let's go to the main shows, or the other main species, the uh, Panda Kings, and then we got the Mardi Gras. Now the Mardi Gras, I'm gonna tell you before we even get to them, those have not been the best for me when it comes to breeding. Other people may work with them very well. I personally don't. Um, they hate me. We have an ongoing beef. Um, they don't like me. I don't like them. And we just leave it at that. But it's okay. Because in here, we have the ones that do like me. The Panda Kings. You guys can see in here, we have tons and tons of Panda Kings. We have tons of babies of them. Um, all moving around, which is great. We have tons under here. And on this cork bark, these guys are real nice. I don't know if you guys want a close-up view of them and what they look like, but these guys are very nice. I do like them. It took them a while to start breeding, but now, now I've got it to the right, right specifications because you guys can see all those babies in there. That's great. But yeah, on to the next bin. Next up is these guys. So these are the, you guys can see, like I don't, I don't have much leaves in here for them um, because I don't have a lot. But I started off with like 45 of these, right? And numbers dwindled down to like as many as you just saw. There's not much else. It has nice humidity in here. I don't even have to water this enclosure right now. I'm going to put a little bit of bug burger on top and just keep monitoring them and see how they do. I don't want to keep putting, I don't want to put too much stuff in here and then I lose sight of them. I didn't even give you guys a proper look at them. But I don't want to lose sight of them and then not be able to basically watch their numbers and now we get to the troublemakers these are the armadillidium vigor or the armadillidium uh orange vigor as you guys can see we have plenty of babies in here they like to hide they don't like to be on the wood necessarily fully uh but we do have some some of them on there but for the most part they do like to burrow kind of like how that one's hiding they do that all throughout the enclosure but there are a few different color variations of them that I have in here. And uh, once they are ready, we'll be bringing them right back to the market. And here we have the orange ember. Not too many of them right now. That's why they have them in a smaller bin. But there's one of them right there. These guys are nice. We got a bunch of orange species around the same time. Um, and it, like we got these when we had the lemonades, um, the Ukraine pied. We have a few different variations of them of different like orange species. You got orange Dalmatian, orange powdered, um, orange koi. Um, so, and then we just got these guys, the orange embers. So they're nice. They're just not breeding for us to the best just yet, but that is okay. Um, hopefully soon they start breeding for us. But let's go on to the last two of all of the isopods that we have at the current moment um, that we have been set up for. Um, I will be making videos for setting up bins for the ice pods that we haven't set up bins for yet. So you guys will be seeing those seeing those videos with those species in that video, just not this one. You guys already saw the Hoffman Sagai, and that's that's the only one that I'm going to show you for today. But we do have plenty of other ones that we got to add to different enclosures. But let's go ahead and go on to the last two. All right, so this is our orange Lavis bin. As you guys can see, there is a bunch of them in here. We're breeding a good amount. Um, we have a nice amount in here. They look very nice. They are the Priscilla Lavis orange. So part of the Lavis genus, just like the dairy cows and milkbacks. Um, but these guys are the orange ones. So 
The enclosure has some nice humidity in it, as you can see around there, so I'm not going to water it. But because they are a labus, I definitely will be adding some nice, nice, nice bug burger to it. Um, and we'll be putting that right on the shelf over here. And then we got this bin of the last one of what we have. And this is what I was talking about earlier. These guys are the granulatum, as you guys can see. That nice granulated pattern. We have a bunch of them in here. They look very nice. We're keeping them, um, keeping them very well, pretty easily, just normally like other species. Uh, but now we're just waiting to see some babies because we just got them. Um, unless that is, no, that's not a baby right there. Is that, is that? No, that's not a baby. But all right, so, but yeah, so we're just waiting for some babies to see them from these guys. Once we see them, we bought a bunch of them. We bought these guys in bulk, so hopefully once we start seeing babies, we just start seeing them produce and just keep producing, and soon we can start bringing these to shows as well. But for now, just got to water that sphagnum moss. You guys say sphagnum or sphagnum? I actually sphagnum. Sometimes I say sphagnum. Depends on how I'm feeling. We're just gonna go and water that side, a little bit of the rest of the enclosure, and then leave it just like that. And then now, last, but certainly not least, is gonna be these guys. Our millipede bins. Sorry, I forgot to zoom out. Our millipede bins. These guys, hopefully, you know, I don't check on them as often, um, but hopefully we start seeing some babies in here. We've had them for a few months now. Don't know the, the necessary care. I know it's basically the same as um, the isopods, but I just want to see babies. I don't see any yet. That's okay. But we got these guys at the at the show as well. I'm not seeing any at the current moment. That one right there was dead when we uh, when they came in. Um, didn't really appreciate, there goes one. These are the bumblebee millipedes. You guys can see right there, that nice black and yellow patterning. I'm not gonna keep messing around too much because they're hiding. Who knows what they're doing down there, ooh la la. Maybe they're making some babies. Maybe they're doing exactly what I want them to do. So because of that, I'm going to reward them with a little bit of extra nutrients right on top. Let them eat that. And I'll go ahead and water this enclosure where the sphagnum moss is and they can do their own thing as well. We do plan on getting a lot more stuff, maybe spiders in the near future. If, uh, for any of you uh, arachnid lovers, we might be getting some spiders, maybe jumping spiders. You might get into dart frogs. You might get into something because I do have this full enclosure right here that I have to put, first I have to uh, plug the light back in, but I have to uh, put some type of animal in here as the main predator. So I might put a pair of dart frogs in here and see how that goes because those guys i've been wanting some for a while especially for all the springtails and everything that i breed in my bioactive don't worry about my cheetos those are mine not yours um but everything else in the bioactive enclosure i redid it and i kind of did it for uh different things that i like even just like down here i purposely dug out a little bit more of this dirt right here and just like so this actually see the animals hiding underneath there um just like so you can see that zebra as well as you see the super worm beetle right there not the best view, but let's go on top. You guys can see a little bit better there. Where'd it go? There it is. That super worm beetle. We have a bunch of them in here. We have some zebras. We have some, uh, uh, I put, I put like a few zebras in here. I put one cappuccino just to say there's a cappuccino in there. Um, as well as giant canyons These are the main function of uh, functional function. Oh, tool isopods that I put in there. So they're the ones that are actually gonna be doing the work. Um, I'm not sure which isopod species I wanna put in there just yet for the color, color pop. But I do have earthworms in here. I did end up putting them in there after I made the other video. Um, don't even know if I posted that one. I don't think I did, I think I deleted it. But um, I did earthworms in here, superworm, uh, larva, as well as beetles. I have the giant canyons, I have some other isopod species as well as springtails, white and orange in here. So I definitely got a bunch of variety in this enclosure, but uh, we'll be making an update video on it shortly. Um, just so you guys can see kind of like where it is now and where, it's, where I'm planning for it to go in the future, where I want some plants to grow and where I'm gonna direct them, where I'm gonna direct them to grow. 
But uh, let's go back into this last bin for today's video. This right here is our ivory millipedes. These are the Florida ivory. You guys can see them right there. Bada boom, bada bang. These guys are nice. Look at them. You guys can see. Millipedes, baby. Um, we have them a few different places. They're pooping a lot. Um, that's that's one that also died when it first got here. And when I say first, I mean I I had to get a refund because they were basically dead inside the enclosure. The rest of them are doing well. Um, the company that I bought them for bought them from. I'm not gonna call them out right now. Um, but the company that I got them from sent me. I feel like they they neglected to pay attention to their their care for their isopod or for their millipedes because they went ahead and put holes in the deli cup that were larger than the size of the millipedes that they actually put in so uh yeah i had a few millipedes already in the box and not in the actual containers when they got here so they did not do too well in the following hours after getting to my house and that was months ago so now i'm just trying to see what i can do with these guys even though i got a credit the credit is not replacing the animals that I have lost, especially for trying to breed for a business. But uh, yeah, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, um, I do plan on getting some more videos. Like I said, I have all this going on. Let me zoom out. I have all this going on right now. I'm just moving shelves. Uh, I moved this shelf down after I filled up all of these bins. And now I'm going to move this shelf a little bit further down because we're going to be putting all of these guys right over here. And if you guys are looking for any springtails, a master culture of springtails, or you definitely want me to bring a pre-made bin for you um, to any of the shows, definitely let me know. PM me. Um, if I haven't updated the website just yet, then you guys can just PM me to see what shows I'm going to locally in Illinois for now. Uh, but this year, and uh, this upcoming year in 2023, we do plan on going to a lot more shows that are not locally here um, in Illinois, in northern Illinois, right, right around Chicago. We have a lot more shows that we plan on doing. Um, you know, in Texas, we're going to be planning on going to all the NARBCs. So Texas, St. Louis, Schaumburg, as well as Tinley again. And we've been going to Wisconsin and a few other places uh, for the Scaled Up Expos. And especially the All Animal Expo has been one of the main helpers of us, for us to vend at. One of the main shows that we've been vending at lately. That's a local show. And, you know, we've been loving it there. And that is in St. Charles, Illinois, twice a, twice a month. So if you guys are looking out for anything, if you guys want anything specific or want to make orders specifically for when you go to shows, definitely reach out to us. Um, you guys can go to featuredcreatures.shop. If you want to go to uh, my business page, uh, you can check out the business YouTube channel as well. I haven't posted as many videos on there as I have on here as of late, but I do plan on doing some more soon regarding that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Peace out, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, but don't forget, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, because I've been watching and seeing that. I've been getting a lot more subscribers lately, as well as views, and that a lot of you guys have been enjoying these videos. So I definitely want to keep my content within that, so let me know what else I should do next. Peace! Oh yeah, I forgot to show you guys these videos. So this is actually the cappuccino bin. But ton of springtails. Nice amount of cappuccinos. You're not going to see them too much on there. And they like to hide on this one, usually a little bit more. There goes a few of them. Look at that, baby cappuccinos. So we do plan on, once these guys get a little bit more, bringing these to shows as well. We got that one, and one more underneath. These are the pack chongs. If I can't find any at first, I'm not going to move around too much, just because they do like to hide. Don't look at my toes. But a zebra. You guys see? Got zebras everywhere. They're just following me. Um... Let's see if we could find any. No, I don't see any. I don't want to move it around too much. Last one. Yeah, I don't see any. But yeah, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and peace out.